Okay, 2.4, quotient rule. Let's look at the quotient rule and how to calculate the quotient rule. Let's use the product rule to determine the quotient rule. This is done by taking a quotient and converting the quotient to a product by using the negative 1 exponent. To take the derivative, we take the derivative using the product rule, which is the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the sorry plus the first times the derivative of the second. Once we do that, we can then simplify the expression. And it turns out that the quotient rule is as follows. And this one's important in terms of order because we have a subtraction. So it's very important that we have the proper order. The order is to take the derivative of a quotient is the first derivative times the second minus the second derivative times the first all divided by the second function all squared. So if you want to remember it, we remember it in this way. Again, f prime g minus g prime f all over g squared. That, folks, is the quotient rule. Okay, so don't forget what the quotient rule is. Let's use some examples to apply the quotient rule. All right, example number one. Given f at x equals x to the power 4 minus 4x cubed plus 6x all over x cubed, find the first derivative. To do that, you have to take the function, and what I would do is I would simplify it first. I notice that there is an x that can be common factored from the numerator that can be taken out from the denominator. Okay, um, That x is a value of 0 in the function, okay? But we know that that would where a, a hole would exist if in the function if we were to draw a graph. So at x equals 0, there would be a hole. All right, in the meantime, you're taking the derivative of f of x, and you take the derivative of the first, which is 3x squared, minus 8x, and times the second, which is the denominator, minus the second derivative times the first, which is the top, all divided by the denominator squared, which is x to the power of 4. What you should see in the numerator is that in here I can see I can pull out something that will simplify the denominator. In this case, each of these have an x that I can pull out. Only one x because no other x's can be pulled out from here, so we can only pull out one x. And when we do that, we'll get 3x squared minus 8x squared minus 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 12 all over x cubed. Why did that happen? Well, let's recap again. There, one of these x's was taken out here so that this disappeared. And this x was taken out here so that when I expanded out the numerator, when I expand this out, I will have 3x squared times x, which is 3x cubed, minus 8x times x is minus 8x squared, and then this minus goes to the 2 that you expand out. So minus 2 times x cubed is minus 2x cubed, minus 2 times minus 4x squared is plus 8x squared, and minus 2 times plus 6 is minus 12. Once we do that, we collect the like terms, and we end up with x cubed, f of x, sorry, f prime of x is equal to x cubed minus 12 all over x cubed. So that is f prime at x. Now, some people suggested y didn't we just divide the whole entire denominator by everything in the numerator and get f at x? And then from there we could take the derivative. Will the derivative of this equal to the derivative of this is the question that's usually asked. So why not let's figure out if we get the same answer. And let's looking at it, 
we notice that when we take the derivative, that is equal to 1 minus 12x to the negative 3. Does that equal the same value as the answer down below? Well, if I take this and divide it, I will get 1 minus, take this and divide it, I will get 12 x to the negative 3. And lo and behold, folks, we will get the same answer. So whether we div first divided by the x cubed to get this, and then we took the derivative, you will get that answer. Or we took the quotient rule, applied it, we will get the exact same answer, just in two different forms. Which is the form that is most likely going to be required? And the answer to that, folks, is going to be this form. This is the form that's most likely going to be the one that's required. Just to let you know for the future. If you were to take later on the second derivatives, you'll, you can use either or to find the second derivative. But again, that's in the next chapter. Let's keep going. Example number two. Given a function, which is a quotient, find the derivative. And in this case, we don't have the luxury of being able to divide by this. Some people may think, let's use the uh, long division to get the answer, or synthetic division. Well, synthetic division won't work for this, but we can use long division. Long division means that we'll have a remainder. What do we do with the remainder? We need to find that derivative too. So, best bet, let's use the quotient rule. Quotient rule is going to be 2x minus 3, which is the derivative of the top, times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, times the top. And we end up getting the bottom all squared. What will that give us? Well, you have to expand it. You expand it out, and you still have that weird bottom, x squared minus 2, all squared. And what you do is you collect the like terms, and you end up with an answer of 3x squared minus 8x plus 6, all over x squared plus 2, all squared. Not bad. Let's keep going. Example number 3. Given f at x is equal to root x over x squared plus 1, calculate the first derivative. So in this case, we have roots, and we have a polynomial, and we have a division statement. Let's find the derivative of this. The derivative of the top, sorry, convert the radical sign to an exponent first, and then go ahead and take the derivative. The derivative of the top times the, uh, the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. That will yield an answer of, let's take the bottom and move it there and convert the numerator to have a common denominator. We don't just do that yet. We just convert it. So what's happening here is I took this and I expanded. I multiplied it to here and then I multiplied this to here. This over here is expanded to give us 2x to the 3 over 2. Now we have that. Find a common denominator of the whole thing. So we're just rewriting that same question just so that you see it again before we go and proceed to get us a common denominator. Okay, so we find a common denominator, which will be 2, and collect all the like terms. Now, how did, how did we only have two terms when we started with three terms here? Well, folks, x to the 3 halves, there's two of them here. Look, x to the 3 halves. So there's our common uh, like terms, sorry. So we have 1 plus 1, sorry, minus 4, because a common denominator, 4 over 2. 1 minus 4 gives us negative 3, x to the power of 3 over 2. And then here, we have this at the front. So this is 
the simplified form of this, all divided by 2, times, this, that was the original denominator, remember a denominator is multiplied by 1 over that denominator, and then after that, we can simplify that numerator with that denominator, and you'll probably be asked the question, to take this x to the negative a half and make sure that there are no negative exponents shown. To do that, we need to get multiply both the numerator and the denominator by x to the power of 1. x to the power of 1, so we're multiplying both the top and the bottom by x, which is our magic number. And what happens when we do that is this x times the negative a half will, means that it's 1 minus a half, which will give us x to the half. x times 3x to the 3 halves will give us 3x to the 5 halves. All over, bottom will be 2x, bracket, x squared plus 1, all squared. So now that eliminates the negative exponent. Last but not least, if you're asked not to put it in with a rational exponent, you could be asked to convert it to a radical form. And how do we do that? We convert to radical form by changing it all to radicals, and you get this as the answer. Why do we get this as the answer? Look carefully, folks. This x to the 5 halves has, can be split to x to the 4 halves plus 1. x to the 4 halves plus 1 half. x to the 4 halves is just x squared times x to the half, which is root x. So this x to the 5 halves can be changed to x squared root x. That's something to note about the root, the radical signs. You have to make sure that you simplify it properly. Okay, folks, that's the end of quotient rule. Take care.